All right, let's get into the box office. I'm surprised you don't want to start with this. You always like the box office. I like to start with what's on the thumbnail. Okay. Because I feel like we never do that, but okay. All right. Um, so Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny unearths <laughs> that's clever. <laughs> 60 million in box office debut. So what do you what's your opinion about that number? I honestly don't know. Well, apparently the movie costs 300 million dollars to make. Okay. So that's not a very good number to start with. What were you predicting? Um, Did you have a prediction? Did they have a prediction? I I don't even think I thought about it enough to have a prediction. Right. But in my mind, I I was honestly thinking it was going to make less than this. Like going into last weekend, just thinking about what it could make. I was like, I think this thing might come out like 45 or something. Okay. Just because it felt like the enthusiasm for this movie had just dropped so much because the Rotten Tomatoes score came out early. They premiered it at Cannes, which I don't even know why they did that. Um, Because if the movie's not like super great, why would you premiere it and let people see it and then get the buzz out there that it's not good or it's mediocre? Well, what do you mean? Like they, they must have thought that it was great. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. So the movie's obviously not great. Well, you said why would they do that if the movie wasn't good? Well, they they somebody were, thought it was right. Somebody thought that but it was. But it's like if you're, I don't know, you would think that everybody that was involved in making the film, that one person or a few people would have stood up and said, "Hey, this movie isn't you know too great. Maybe we shouldn't premiere it." Because <laughs> they do that all the time with like movies that suck. They just they just won't screen them until like a day before. That way, when the scores start coming out, then, you know, they just hope that nobody sees it and they think, go and see the movie. I think that they are just really counting on the nostalgia. Yeah, I think so. But really, it's just, it's ridiculous to have an Indiana Jones movie budgeted at $300 million. If they would have more modestly budgeted this at like $100 million or something, then $60 million would have been fine. Um but yeah, three hundred million for an Indiana Jones movie in 2023. I just don't think the franchise has has the legs to be able to excite people in this day and age, mm-hmm. especially with the last one not being received well. And um, yeah, there's just been a lot of negativity surrounding this whole thing for the past three months. So gotcha. um, I think it started like back in March where they were coming out and saying that uh, Indiana Jones had been screened and it was not very good. Um, gotcha. So yeah, this doesn't surprise me, but it's, there, there was another interesting article that I saw that came up today, and I was talking about the summer box office as a whole. Mm-hmm. Um, and apparently right now it's down 2% from where it was last year, um, which is kind of funny because we went into the summer, if you remember, saying, oh, the theaters are back. There's tons of movies coming out. We got a lot to be excited for. And it just feels like week after week, um, we're talking about movies that aren't performing well. Right. Like the Flash kind of bombed. Indiana Jones bombed. Elemental didn't do very well. Right. Transformers did okay. The only real, like Little Mermaid didn't do too well either. The only real success story has been Spider-Man, I would say, which did really well. And Guardians did good at the beginning of May because yeah. they technically count the summer season in May. So um, what I want to ask you is why, <laughs> why do you think that is? I, well, I, I clearly don't have a lot to say about this. Why would you think that um, these movies aren't doing well? Everybody seemed to be so ha- excited for the summer, all these summer movies, but nobody's going to see them. I mean, it. some of it might play into, you know, social media. Yeah. Like like you said, the the people who do get out and see it kind of immediately – you know, if the movie sucks, well, you know, in this day and age, if something sucks, like people are going to talk about it. People are yeah. going to you're going to have your your memes and your reels and your shorts and, you know, everybody's going to be talking crap about it. And I mean, that stuff does like affect people and change people's minds like it did for me. Like it made me not want to go see The Flash when I heard about the CGI sucking. Yeah. So. And it kind of feels like the movies fell off when we fell off the theaters, to be honest. Yeah. Because we were going like pretty consistently. We saw Little Mermaid. We saw or well, we saw Guardians, Little Mermaid, Spider Verse, and Transformers. And Transformers didn't do really well, but it did okay. Well, for what I it think, was. I mean, you act like we haven't gone to the movie in a long time. The last movie we saw was Transformers, and then after that, everything started flopping. 
So well, I, I'm saying that we are responsible. Right. Sure. What I'm saying. Um, but you know, also like the, you know, if the movie is not good, it's just not good. Yeah. <laughs> and then, you know, also too, I think I saw something where someone was saying that there's just too many, there's too many movies to see. Like yeah. we need more breaks in between, you know? Well, I don't know if I agree with that completely. Cause a few years ago in the summer, like it was, it's always been like movie after movie after movie in the summer. Like this is the season to go to the movies. Yeah. And for a couple of years, you know, with the pandemic, there hasn't been anything to really go to the theater to see. Yeah. Last year, I think there, there was quite a few things that came out in the summer, but this year they set it all up to be that traditional summer movie season. Everybody's back and we're going to the theaters. Everybody should be excited. I, I honestly just think it's the movies. I think that they overestimated the nostalgia of Michael Keaton and the flash. Mm -hmm. And you know, that movie had all of its problems with Ezra Miller and the nostalgia for Harrison Ford coming back as Indiana Jones when he's over 80 years old. So yeah, maybe don't rely on these old guys for, <laughs> for your money anymore. They're, it's not the eighties at the end of the day. So this is true. I, I,